Good morning to all. After such a uh, vibrant talk, it's very difficult to stand here and talk to you about sexual dysfunction in diabetes. And, uh, but I feel uh, the presence of sexual dysfunction is also an indicator of a cardiovascular disease. So let's go forward and talk about the epidemiology of uh, <coughs> sexual dysfunction. Nearly half of all men and women living with diabetes experience some sort of sexual dis dysfunction and sub at some point in their life. So they report twice as much as those without diabetes and prevalence is reported to be about 35 to 75% in men and 30 to 60% in women with type uh, with uh, especially with the type 1 diabetes and with their quality of life is also very much impaired. Unfulfilling sex life can lead to feeling of guilt and rejection and problems with relationship between the partners. Culturally, discussing about the sexual dysfunction is a taboo and people with type 2 diabetes may be very reluctant to share their problem, especially with their physician, unless they are very close to them. A study showed only 19% of women and 47% of men discussed the issue with their physician. So what are the risk factors? Duration of diabetes, uh, poor blood sugar control, as we all know, hypertension, dyslipidemia, obesity, and psychosocial problems, and smoking, and maybe excessive alcoholism and depression as well. So what are the common pathophysiological mechanisms? These are common for both men and women. So endothelial dysfunction, decreased nitric oxide production, increased oxidative stress, inflammation, hormonal imbalance, and neurotransmitter imbalance. Now, most often female sexual dysfunction is talked less about because females talk about it less and they think that they do not have the problem, but they do have. And as I said in the earlier slide, it's almost to the tune of 60% of women with diabetes experience. So I'm going to talk about the female sexual dysfunction first. Previously, only ED was thought to be the only sexual dysfunction, but now there is a growing recognition of FST and is widely experienced in diabetes mellitus. So what are they? Hypoactive sexual desire disorder, female arousal disorder, decreased lubrication, dyspareunia, that is pain during the sexual intercourse, female orgasm disorder, and also vulvodynia, which is a common problem in women with diabetes, perhaps due to decreased secretions, painful diabetic sensory neuropathy, and repeated UTIs, which are more common to the female. So coming to the pathophysiological mechanisms in FST, the neurologically, there is decreased do dopamine and serotonin and impaired neural transmission. And then there are hormonal factors, decreased estrogen and progesterone, and also thyroid hormone imbalance. And vascular, there's a decreased blood flow and endothelial dysfunction, and smooth mul muscle relaxation abnormality, where, where there is decreased nitric oxide production and increased phosphodiesterase 5. So how do we diagnose FST? Of course, physical examination is the first. Pelvic examination, vulval, vulvar and vaginal examination, breast examination, and neurological examination like sensations and reflexes, etc., and hormonal evaluations, whereas FSH, LH, and estradiol are measured. There are some specific tests for uh, FST. Uh, for hypoactive desire disorder, hormonal evaluation, and there is a uh, female sexual function index, which is a questionnaire and uh, I'll come to that a little later. Then female arousal disorder, again, uh, uh, valvoir and vaginal testing, and also FSFI, 
and female organ or orgasmic disorder uh, is um, again uh, you know as, uh, concluded with the FSFI questionnaire and also sometimes the EMG can give uh, uh, rise to the diagnosis. Vaginismus again is diagnosed with the pelvic examination, vulvar and vaginal testing. And then there are some additional tests like sleep study because disturbed sleep also is one of the uh, uh, outcome of the depression and can lead to FST. Cardiovascular evaluation and neurological uh, consultation to rule out multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, etc. So women with autonomic neuropathy and vascular changes, uh, they, it causes reduced vaginal secretions which may give pain during the sexual act. The dryness further increases the chances of STDs in women. And women with poor glycemic control are vulnerable to many STDs like vaginal candidiasis, thrush, and HIV also. Painful sensory neuropathy in women can give rise to vulvodynia. So these are some of the biomarkers which are common to both. Testosterone, total and free, estradiol, prolactin, TSH, C-reactive proteins, and endothelial function tests, which is flow-mediated dilatation. So uh, that much was for FST. And coming to the types of sexual dysfunction in men, <coughs> they are erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, retrograde ejaculation, and reduced libido and erection. So pathophysiological mechanisms in ED, which is the most commonly experienced, uh, uh, rather, you know, very distressful uh, condition in men. The neurofactors, again, reduced uh, nitric oxide production, impaired sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system balance, and vascular factors like atherosclerosis, endothelial dysfunction, and decreased blood flow to the penile artery. And these are the hormonal factors, that is low testosterone, increased prolactin, thyroid hormone imbalance, again, which is common to both men and women, and smooth muscle relaxation, wherein there is a decreased cyclic GMP and increased phosphodiesterase type 5. So, uh, how is it defined? It is a persistent failure to achieve or maintain erection for successful sexual intercourse, causing decreased quality of life in women, in men, sorry. It is a common sexual dysfunction in men, increasing with age, of course, age of person as well as age of diabetes. And the natural history of ED in men with diabetes is gradual and does not happen overnight. So if it's detected early, maybe we can treat them better. So how do we diagnose? Many specialized tests are available. Uh, the one of the most practical questionnaire is International Index of Erectile Function, IIEF-5, a sum score of 25 or less is diagnostic. Intracavernosal injection of vasoactive drugs like uh, vasoactive drugs can also be used to diagnose. The nocturnal penile uh, tussnicens and rigidity monitoring, penile duple and ultrasound and Doppler studies, penile biothesiometry and dynamic infusion cavernosometry and corpus cavernosometry and MRI and various neurological tests to assess autonomic dysfunction can be done. So a uh, few words about the retrograde ejaculation. Uh, it is when semen, which is in most cases, be ejaculated via urethra is redirected to the urinary bladder. That's what happens. So they fail to ejaculate. So retrograde ejaculation is sometimes referred to as a dry orgasm in men. Men often notice when they masturbate that they experience orgasm but no semen release. So this is retrograde ejaculation. So there are no remarkable tests to diagnose uh, retrograde ejaculation. Uh, these conditions are mostly subjective and diagnosis is clinical and based on detailed adequate history given by the patient and the partner. So 
this, uh, sorry, this is uh, again a neurophysiological testing for women, vaginal and clitoral sensory threshold testing, and uh, EMG for of the pelvic floor muscles, nerve conduction studies, evoke potentials, imaging, pelvic ultrasound, magnetic resonance imaging, and CT scan. These are all the tests that are, can be done, most often not done. So how do we manage counseling for uh, women? It's a very difficult task, but it should be done. And uh, it has been found in many studies that uh, uh, studies, studies improves our lubrication and satisfaction causes significant improvement. Uh, usual dose is 6 to 10 mg per, um, per day maximum up to 200 milligrams of uh, uh, yohim binds, okay? So usual dose is 6 to 10 mg, but it, is, it may not be available for us. So vaginal dryness is the most common complaint in women and use of adequate lubricants during sexual intercourse many times helps. So common test for uh, men and women is a, uh, ST is a silent indicator of coexisting silent CVD, as I said in the beginning. Lipid profile, CV evaluation should be done in all, and total and free testosterone levels, LH, FSH, and uh, may help in excluding hypogonadism. So uh, management, of course, metabolic control, optimal glycemic levels will improve se uh, sexual dysfunction, however, some degree of dysfunction may still persist due to irreversible neurovascular damage. Therefore, specific therapies are imperative. Counseling plays a very big role in uh, treating ST, and it helps to understand that ST is organic in origin and is no different from any other complication of diabetes mellitus. So educate the partner, too, about reality of the problem. So there are some drugs which are available one is phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor because remember that is increased in these people so it uh, this is one of the drugs then these drugs act only in the presence of an arousal so if a person does not have arousal it should not be used so not effective uh, uh, this uh, smooth muscles are if the smooth muscles are damaged or penile arterial blood uh, supply is compromised so it has to be excluded before we think of phosphodiesterase inhibitors. Uh, only 50% of patients respond to this therapy. Should be taken one to two hours before the act, and onset of action is within one hour, lasts for about six to 10 hours. And then most men will need a dosage of 100 mg, but can start with 50 mg. And uh, at least four attempts should be made before labeling the drug ineffective, that is sildenafil, is safe in diabetes, hypertension, and stable angina, provided patient is not on nitrates. So main side effects of uh, these drugs are headache, flushing, acidity, and rarely visual disturbances, and Taldafil has a much longer half-life. And intracavernosal injection of vas vasoactive drugs also can be used, and topical creams are available, and, uh, 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 and you know, these are all the uh, various uh, 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 methods in which, uh, methods which uh, improve the sexual dysfunction. In men, vacuum erection device can also be used. And then penile prosthesis is the other uh, method. There are two, uh, three varieties of penile prosthesis. Uh, this is one of the examples. And it is an inflatable penile prosthesis and components are cylinders inside the penis and a pump in the scrotum and reservoir in the abdominal wall. So there are three pieces of it. And how it works is uh, fluid transfer from reservoir to cylinders, pump activation inflates the cylinders, deflation of, by releasing the fluid back to the reservoir. So that's how it works. And it is, uh, there are some malleable penile processes again and risk and complications of prostheses are there. So infection is one of the commonest uh, uh, complication. And uh, pain, sometimes it can also cause scarring inside, so which can be, of course, uh, he, uh, uh, manipulated. 
so uh, minimally invasive surgery, robotic assisted surgery, and new uh, materialized designs, penile implant re refinement also are available. So there are improved processes as of now. So, uh, so there are some emerging trends for the treatment of ST that are, they are stem cell therapy, gene therapy, mindful based interventions, and telemedicine for ST treatment and extracorporeal shortwave uh, short uh, therapy. So uh, I don't have much time. The stem cell therapy <coughs> is again intracavernosal injection, intraurethral injection, and systemic uh, administration of the stem cells. And then gene therapy is also, uh, uh, you know, there are different gene therapies, viral vector mediated gene transfer, non-viral gene transfer, and gene editing. And target genes are nitric oxide synthase, vascular endothelial growth factor, platelet-derived growth factor, androgen, etc. So approach and benefits of the gene therapy, it's a long-term efficacy, minimally invasive, and reduce side effects and improved quality of life. Telemedicine, again, it is very common in the Western countries uh, uh, via video consultations, phone consultations, and et cetera, and conditions treated are all these. EDP, PST, and all, et cetera, FST, sorry. Then extracorporeal shockwave therapy is uh, given for ED particularly. It's a non-drug, non-surgical management without adverse effect. And uh, even for women, it can be used. In women, there is improved vaginal lubrication, clitoral sensation. Madam, please and conclude in next 30 seconds. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So takeaway messages. Uh, di uh, sexual dysfunction is a very common in uh, very common in diabetes and often neglected affects both men and women psychological and physical factors affect sd accurate diagnosis requires comprehensive evaluation starting starting from clinical history to the tests then lifestyle modification of course is uh, essential and uh, cessation of smoking uh, improves the uh, sexual dysfunction SD could be predictor of future CVD. It also has an adverse impact on patient's self-esteem and quality of life. Treatment options vary, medical and device therapy, and various treatment modalities are available and should be um, used to improve our patient's quality of life. Thank you.